You know, sooner or later, all businesses, even the most successful, run into challenges sustaining and achieving growth. Faced with this unpleasant reality, they're compelled to reinvent themselves. Let me begin with a few questions for you. How many of you are currently in a state of corporate or brand reinvention? Quite a few. How many of you are with a company that may have recently come to the realization, whether suddenly or slowly over time, that the way that you're currently structured or positioned or marketed simply isn't uh, enough in today's marketplace? A bunch more. Or possibly the products and services that you're providing are not as relevant to the changing consumer as they once were. You know, that realization can be very sobering, not to mention a little bit intimidating. Most organizations are very likely to reinvent themselves out of necessity because the alternative is a path to irrelevance and ultimately failure. Difficult financial circumstances often provide that awakening. And sometimes it's as subtle as a cold uh, bucket of water in your face. In addition, competitive pressures often drive the need to reinvent, as do rapidly changing consumer dynamics. So tackling these challenging realities requires a management team that's thoughtful, bold, and not afraid to take some calculated risks along the way in a coordinated effort to lead their company into the future. And this need to reinvent your business manifests itself. It becomes very clear that things have to change. But what? How do you identify the strategies that are going to make a difference? How can you reimagine your business? So reinvention starts with determining what difficult questions you need to ask yourself. What's currently working and what's not? Where are the consumers heading? Where should you start? And then, how do you know that you're on the right path once you've set a plan in motion? As we all in this room know, these critical decisions have to be grounded in a deep consumer understanding. Okay, with a solid understanding of consumers in hand, the next part of your reinvention process requires taking a hard and objective inventory of your existing assets and capabilities. These assets can be tangible, including things like patents, products, processes, technology, and services, while intangible assets are often not physical in nature. They're likely not going to appear on your balance sheet. They include things like intellectual property, institutional knowledge, consumer insights, partnerships, or brand recognition. So after you've identified all of these, you need to step back and really analyze how well your organization helps ensure internal alignment between those unique assets and your customer value proposition. Which elements of your core offering could be reduced or eliminated? And which others might be improved or newly created to better deliver against consumer needs? Once these questions have been answered, then the creative process of reimagining your future can really begin. Ultimately, the final step in the reinvention is a formulation of a dynamic strategy that will help move you forward to that state. Now, you're going to find yourself in some uncharted waters if you go down this road. So your strategy needs to be very fluid. You've got to be flexible. And you need to be adaptable. Apple may be the greatest example of this idea from the past half century. The late Steve Jobs knew how to identify and focus on the hidden intangible assets that he had within his company. And you know, he had his own hidden asset. And this one's pretty cool. He had the powerful ability to visualize things that consumers didn't know that they couldn't live without. Now think about that. By taking his amazing vision and combining it with Apple's world-class creative and engineering talent, they were able to develop beautiful, simple, amazing breakthrough products and services. And in what seemed like almost overnight, consumers throughout the entire world started flocking to Apple stores to purchase those products. The results made Apple one of the most highly valued companies in history. And it all stemmed from Steve Jobs really reimagining his company by leveraging his hidden assets toward a shared vision based on a thorough understanding of his consumer marketplace. 
Well, we faced many of these intimidating questions at Rite Aid more than four years ago. And our turnaround and the strategies that support it continue to evolve today. Our journey toward reimagining Rite Aid may provide you with a few useful insights on the lessons that we've learned along our journey. In late 2008, our new management team walked into a situation at Rite Aid where, honestly, we faced sharply declining sales and EBITDA. We had a severe lack of liquidity and a very tired uh, fleet of retail locations. At the same time, a strong national health care movement was gaining steam, and the community pharmacy financial model, as we all knew it, was under tremendous mounting pressure. And on top of that, our workforce was feeling somewhat defeated and deflated. I think you all know that a lot of people, both inside and outside of our company, had given up on us at that point in time. So as we stood in that intimidating place, we knew something had to change. Actually, a lot of things needed to change. So where do you start? Well, we began with a belief that reinventing our business needed to be all about value creation, period. Now, we focused a tremendous amount of time, money, and effort on fully understanding our customers' needs. And our approach was research-based. We complemented standard research methodologies with things like behavioral anthropologists, attitudinal segmentations, and visualization techniques to gain a deeper understanding of their need for empowerment and their desire for control. Then we started looking at ourselves. We identified our most differentiating and important assets. And they became the primary tools that we leveraged to fuel our turnaround as we reimagined our business at Rite Aid. As we dug deeply into that toolbox, we quickly realized that our associates, over 90,000 strong, were our single largest hidden asset. Our objective was to stimulate creativity and innovation while at the same time instilling a mindset that was totally driven towards delighting every customer on every visit. The transformation rested on the realization that we would create differentiation by building a personalized experience with a much sharper focus on our best customers. Those individuals with chronic conditions who rely heavily on all the pharmacy services that we provide to them. We set out striving for a higher level of engagement with those best customers and a deeper understanding of their needs so that we could provide them with advice and products that they needed in their effort to reach their wellness goals. Knowing that our competitive strategy needed to be communicated in a memorable way and that it needed to be easily understood, we established a new vision, mission, and set of core values. And we believe that they're the source of strength and clarity for any company. To be truly successful, though, our associates need to believe that these phrases are more than just words on a slide. And in addition to the vision, mission, and core values communication, we've also developed a strategic roadmap for our field and leadership teams that highlight the six principles that guide our strategic and operational plan. These strategic pillars help Rite Aid associates define and understand why we do what we do so that we can move forward together doing what's best for all of our best customers. Armed with this understanding of where we're heading, our associates then had to adopt a bold mentality, ready to change their behaviors and begin to take more smart risks. We needed to get every region, every district, every store, and every associate headed in the same direction under this clear set of shared ideas and goals, yet with the freedom to think of new ideas and the ability to put them to work. All right, the second hidden asset in our toolbox was the trusted and personal relationships that we have between our pharmacy teams and their patients. We know that above all else, the greatest value that we can provide to any of our patients is to be proactive partners in helping them reach their personal health and wellness goals. One of our most important innovations was built all around the strength that these, leadership, uh, these relationships provide. It's the underpinning of the Wellness Plus Initiative, a true loyalty program that is pharmacy-centric in its design and supports our best patients through significant discounts in recognition of their loyalty to Rite Aid. Wellness Plus incorporates wellness benefits supporting our brand positioning 
And from the beginning, it's engaged our associates in bringing that message to life to all of our consumers. In the eyes of our best customers, Wellness Plus is helping Rite Aid provide individual assistance, direction, guidance, and support. And we believe that this creates a compelling competitive advantage for us. That's why the Rite Aid brand position of actively working with you to help keep you well packs so much power to consumers. The power of that promise is reinforced with the innovation of the Rite Aid Wellness Ambassador. Many of you have seen them in our stores. Now you talk about reimagining, this is a big one for us. In the past two years, we've armed and deployed over 1,500 wellness ambassadors. They're recruited and hired for their passion, their strong communication skills, and their belief in personal wellness. It's a new position for our company that reinforces the benefits of our pharmacy and focuses on the individual needs of our customers. Another important innovation contributing to the successful turnaround at Rite Aid has been the rollout of our wellness stores. The design and merchandising of our wellness stores directly aligns with another important intangible asset, our consumer insights. These insights identified unmet needs that led to the creation of the wellness stores across our entire footprint. A cross-functional team of associates and key suppliers helped with the planning and execution of the original wellness store pilot. And it was all based on customer research and customer feedback. And now here we are two and a half years later and we've completed over 900 wellness remodels. This innovative approach to store format development, culture change, customer service, and patient loyalty has defined our reinvention of Rite Aid. So, how can you begin to successfully reimagine and reinvent your own business? Well, make sure you've got a rock-solid understanding of your customer's needs, not only today, but into the future. Take an inventory of those unique assets that you have in your own toolbox. Build yourself a roadmap, and then make sure you're spreading the word. Be clear, be concise, be flexible, and above all, be relentless. You know, as I reflect on our recent reinvention, there's one more hidden asset that we found in our toolbox that we utilize constantly. And it's all of you, our supplier partners. Our best partners help us understand our best customers in ways that we can't on our own. They challenge conventional thinking and they help identify better solutions in very creative ways. They provide fresh, objective, independent perspectives that are critically important to us. But our best partners also bring true, strategic, bigger picture thinking to bear. And many of you in this room today have played a key role in our efforts to reimagine and reinvent Rite Aid. And for that, we will forever be in your debt. We appreciate it. At this point, our reinvention is well underway, but believe me, we are far from finished and we've got a great deal to learn. You know, business transformation is occurring every day all around us and it's occurring with us or without us. Reinvention, on the other hand, will only occur when we as business leaders make conscious decisions to make it happen. So I challenge you, make a bold decision. Inventory your hidden assets, build yourself a roadmap, and then communicate loud and often. Thank you all for making our journey a little more exciting a little more successful and much more enjoyable along the way. And best of luck with your own journey as you guys leverage those hidden assets in reimagining your business.